Let us pray. Most gracious God, speak with authority in our lives. Jesus, speak to us and to what is in us so that we might be whole. Speak to us with love, with hope, and with strength so that we might hear you and know deep inside that we are your people and that you are our God. Let it be so in your most precious and holy name. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning. Good morning. And thank you all for being here on this most glorious day the Lord has made. So most of you know what I'm about to ask. What did you hear in today's readings? As some of you know from our Bible discussion group, we always seem to focus on the Gospels. This week was no exception. As usual, we had much to talk about. Today's Gospel, although short in length, as was all of Jesus' teachings, short or long, all were and are tremendously deep in content. His living words continues to move through the millennia to all of humanity, providing a message to all who are open to receive. Today we heard much of evil. Some would even say demonic possession, a subject we don't talk too much about these days. As some of you are aware, as I have shared here before, my first call, my first job in ministry was at a state psychiatric hospital. I have to share some of my fellow seminarians thought that was appropriate. <laughs> but I was working with men in a secure care unit, the prison unit. These guys were all capital offenders. All were placed there by the criminal justice system. All were determined to be not guilty of their crimes by reason of insanity. Evil and acts of evil were very real within that population. I spent years considering studying, being in discussion as to how evil touches individuals, families, groups, and communities. I have come to define evil as the absence of God, the absence of love. I've determined that evil acts often beget evil acts. Evil grows evil. After working in that hospital and other prison environments, I moved on to hospice, which in many ways was another eye-opener. Hospice is and was, of course, working with those who sadly have terminal diagnosis. But for me, it is also about getting to know those patients and their families from every walk of life, every culture, every social economic level, varying religious, educational backgrounds. In short, in the 20 plus years, I was studying forensics or the study of people, listening to their most personal stories, their thoughts, how they engage with life. In these observations, in these meetings, in this listening, I once again often encountered or rubbed elbows with evil. Not so much in your face like it was in prison, Evil was nonetheless often present, more lurking in the shadows spoken about in whispers and secrets. One of the most common evils was encountering people who lost their connectedness with God or with faith. An unbelief in any sacred force. In addition, sadly, many had lost their faith in their fellow human beings. Many I met were and are quite sure that this world is circling the drain and nothing can be done to save it. Some are certain our problems as a culture are way too broken to fix. Often folks name evil, often without their knowing. Demons are in fact empowered, often seeping through via their language or attitudes regarding homophobia, racism, sexism, classism, religious, and ideological intolerance. Violence at home, violence at school, poverty, war, greed, terrorism, extreme individualism, out of control capitalism, media-infused fear, 
that leads to paranoia. I am sadly certain that as a group here, we could add much to that list of what we have personally experienced and then share how these evils have touched all of us. I know what some of you are thinking. Well, thanks, Harry, on this rainy, gloomy Sunday morning for, <laughs> for depressing us. I'm sorry. At my last job, my former boss would say to everyone, never present a problem that's going on in your agency, your program, unless you also present at least three possible solutions. This, of course, for forces us to think of remedies. More often than not, because of that mandate, I, as others, often developed a positive outcome before asking for any sort of help. I also developed a practice of presenting issues to my team, knowing that almost always someone would come up with a plan to more or less get us out of trouble. So what do we do? The world seems to be full of stuff full of negativity. Some of this stuff sure smells like evil to me, totally devoid of love or God. But here's the good news. Here it is right in front of us in today's gospel. The solution to all our troubles can be found with God, with Jesus. Jesus spoke with authority. He named evil. He commanded the unclean spirit to come out of that man. He named the demons then remove the evil spirits. Of course he did. After all, he was God. He had all the superpowers. But what can we do? How do we fix a world that seems busted? I asked a folk at our Wednesday Bible discussion group last week that very question. How do we fix a broken world? How do we stop the hate? How do we infuse love? God, Jesus, the Holy Spirit, into our world. After all, that's what we are called, commanded to do as people of God, as Christians, followers of Christ. Many good ideas were lifted up. We discussed naming the demons as Jesus did, naming the demons within us. If we don't name those demons, the demons will surely name us. If we can't honestly look into ourselves and see what is separating us, from being in that adult relationship with God, then perhaps it's time we stop kidding ourselves. Stop and smell not only the sweet smell of our blessings, but also pause, smell, sniff out the stench of the garbage, the evil within. Name it, call it out, and remove it from our lives. Another thought lifted up by our group was that it's sort of hard to dislike people with opposing views once you get to know them. I have family who think and live life totally different than the way I do. I have lifelong friends who have always had different social views and perspectives than mine. I have worked shoulder to shoulder with healthcare professionals in the darkest days of COVID who vote differently than I do. I am proud to say my friends are a diverse group in every way. I love them all and because I know them, respect them and value them. Celebrate the love they bring to the world. They have grown me closer to God and perhaps in some small ways they have grown because of me. Jesus calls us to love all of our neighbors as ourselves and I am first to admit, for some, that seems almost impossible. <laughs> but I may not like everyone. And what do we do? I pray that God will show me how to love them. But here's the thing. We do have the answer. We were given superpowers directly from God. We can change the world. That, per, that power exists here within each of us. That power exists here at St. John's. We invite and honestly welcome everyone to enter through those doors, those magic doors, to enter this sacred place, to partake of this banquet, experience God in the mass, the liturgy, the music, each other, to invite our brothers and sisters to come home, to come home to where we, their family, awaits to welcome them. 
we the people of St. John's can and have most certainly already changed the world. And finally, we need to pray. We must never dismiss or underestimate the power of prayer to pray unceasingly for love to enter this world. Praying is not some sort of pious resignation to God's will or an exercise that puts our minds at ease, but rather using the words of theologian Ched Myers, prayer is an intensely personal struggle within each disciple, within each of us, and among us collectively to resist the despair and distraction that cause us to practice unbelief, to abandon or avoid the way of Jesus. In other words, it is a struggle to believe that change can really happen. A better world is possible. In my words, we're never alone. God is always with us. God is part of this family, always present. The choice is ours. Do we choose to live in hope or do we choose to die in despair? I say, we are people of hope, people of prayer. Look around. God is here. Love is here. Look at our outreach committee, our social committee, our choir, all of you, and the many good works you do, seen and unseen. Come to the coffee hour and see love. See love in action. See love alive. We are growing in every way, and in that growth, each of you, He's changing the world. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for sending Jesus into this world to set us free. Thank you for freeing us from the power of sin. Thank you for bringing good news to the poor and freedom for the oppressed. In Jesus' precious name, amen.